Greetings, fellow Gorehounds. Before we begin this review, I want to first remind all of you that SAG-AFTRA and the WGA, the Actors Guild and the Writers Guild, are still currently on strike. So I'm going to include in the description of this video a link to both of their websites so that you can further educate yourself on why exactly these two guilds are striking, as well as a link to the Entertainment Fund if you want to help them more directly. And as you probably already know, movies cannot get made without writers and actors as much as the rich fucks in charge want to convince all of you that they can be replaced with AI, they can't and they shouldn't be replaced with AI. So fuck the corporates, support the unions, and uh, let's get on with this review. Greetings, fellow Gorehounds, and welcome back to a Blood Splattered Vlog. I'm the Horror Guru. And I'm Count Jacula. And today we're going to talk about Talk To Me, which is an Australian horror film by the Filippo Brothers, who are apparently YouTubers who I literally heard of for the first time looking up who made this movie. I had no idea that this movie was made by a couple of YouTubers, yeah. which, let me tell you, right now... Already high marks. I yeah. didn't know that. Yeah, I didn't know that, and I couldn't tell while watching the movie. In fact, based on the results of this movie, they're now on my radar for whatever they make next. I'm going to yeah. be looking forward to it. Yeah. So this movie is about a group of teenagers who, as a party trick, have this mummified hand that they use to perform seances. Yeah, and the seances are real. Mm -hmm. You grab the hand, you see a ghost. Absolutely. And a ghost will possess you and talk through you to the rest of the people at the party. It's a very dangerous thing these kids are doing, as the movie yeah, proves. Because you're like, you don't know who these dead guys are. You also don't even know if the history they were told of the hand, that it used to belong to some medium who would yeah. perform seances, is even true. Yeah, they give you just enough history of the damn thing mm -hmm. that you're like, it's magical. You know? Now, here's the thing. According to them, there are a set of rules they must follow in order to do these seances, one of which is not to last longer than... 90 90 seconds. seconds? 90 yeah, seconds. 90 seconds. If they last longer than 90 seconds, the ghosts might want to stay around, is essentially what yeah, one of yeah, the characters Yeah, yeah, they become says. harder to, to, to expel. Now, can you take one guess what happens when our main character, Mia, performs one of these seances for the first time, and the rest of the friends cannot stop the seance before the 90 second mark happens? From then on, our main character starts seeing ghosts outside of the seances. And this leads into chaos among these friends. We're talking like some self-mutilation. Yeah. We're talking like some ghosts appearing and then doing weird shit and then it turning out to be like one of them is doing it because they've been yeah. possessed. All around, not a good time for these friends. Yeah, and uh, none of the friends do that. Oh, it's real. It's not real. Once they've touched the hand, once you activate the hand, like you're like, oh shit, magic's real. Yeah, so there isn't much of a question of whether any of this is real throughout the movie. It's 100% supernatural shit from the get-go and the characters do not die doubt it. It's also enough of an explanation for why they don't just mm -hmm. demonstrate to the adults. Even if the adults understood what was going on, it might make things worse for them from like a kid's point of view. Yeah, because now <laughs> the ghost might be possessing their parent. Yeah, you know? exactly. Like, or the parents might completely overreact in some way. But yeah. I, to be honest, I don't think the overreaction would be an overreaction. It would probably be a pretty accurate reaction. Yeah, considering what happens, yes. like I don't think any reaction is too big. Let me just put it this way. If you have any sort of squick for things such as like eye trauma or self mutilation or self mutilation you're you're going to yeah but just be careful going into this movie let me just say that yeah 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 it's significantly less than like hostile yeah, it's not on like a extreme horror level. Yeah, it's not. It's not an extreme. But or for a possession level, yeah. and ghost story, it's a yeah, little it's extreme. a little more. Yeah. If you're like me and you're a little tired of the recent trend of possession movies, this movie is a completely unique experience. Yeah. It does not feel like any of them. There's never a point where like a priest shows up and starts talking about no, God. No, no. Th this is about a group of teens dealing with a problem that they caused by playing with forces they were not ready for. It reminds me a lot of movies like It Follows, but in It Follows' case, the thing just comes to them yeah. through no fault of their own. In this case, they are kind of at fault for it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, this is, in It Follows, an act that should be relatively fine. innocent and fine turns into a curse. Yeah. In this one, the fact that the ghosts are real is the warning. Yeah, yeah, it is 100% the warning. Absolutely. But like It Follows, one thing I really like about this movie is that the teenagers feel 
very raw and real. Yeah. They do not feel like you're watching CW teens. No. These feel like they're real teenagers. Even if the actors are probably in their 20s, they yeah. don't look it. One of the things I liked about the group of kids is that it felt like a very modern group of kids. It did. There's a genderqueer character that yes. they never call attention to. They never it. call attention to it. The kids already just accept them for who they are. Right, right. Because that would have happened, like, if it happened, it would have happened ages ago. Exactly. You know, so, exactly. You, know, you just need to know. And that I like that it's also not like, oh, we're gonna have a gender queer character, so we're gonna make them like a perfect character because we don't we want we don't want to rough it up. No, ruffle any the gender queer character that character's is an a asshole. Bitch, you know, that character is an ass. <laughs> Complete you know? asshole. This is one of those friends groups where the longer the movie goes on, you go like, none of you should be friends. You're all horrible. Oh to yeah. Each other. Yeah, this is not a friend group that's gonna <laughs> hold together past high school. That being said, know? it's really fun to watch them together, especially when they're partying and having a good time. Yeah. And they endear themselves to you even though they're assholes to each other. That's a very fine line to walk. It is. When you have characters being just complete cunts, but you kind of love to watch them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's fun to watch. The other thing that felt really real is when the shit really hits the fan. Mm -hmm. That all kind of stops and it gets like oh, yeah. super serious. And they're like, uh, wait a minute. <laughs> we need to figure this out. Now, some characters are like, fuck this, I'm out. I'm out. Yeah, <laughs> I'm out. I'm and done. Then you, and then you never see them again. <laughs> yeah, because you're, you're like, yeah, probably the best move. Absolutely. They act like kids mm -hmm. who are trying to be a little too cool. Yep. They have one friend who is probably actually supposed to be in their mid-20s and probably shouldn't be hanging around these teenagers. <laughs> yes, yes. You know? It is often the one putting the worst peer pressure on the teens. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Which actually brings me to another thing I kind of like about this movie. Now, you can totally watch this movie and just watch it as a straightforward possession movie without reading too deeply into the themes and things like that in the movie. Yeah. But if you want to, this movie also works as an interesting metaphor for what happens when when a group of teens are introduced to a really bad drug. Like we're yes. not talking weed. We're talking like yeah, yeah, speed. Yeah. 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 Someone starts overdosing on meth yeah. or like heroin or Absolutely. you know, something that's that's clearly doing bad things to them. And this is really highlighted in the main character, Mia, who, as we learn at the very beginning of this movie, recently lost her mom. So she very much represents that teen who gets into the drugs to run away from her her, her problem. Her problems. Because yeah, it's it's too much. Yeah. And eventually it turns. Yeah. Like it goes from being a happy thing to eventually being a dark thing that's now damaging her and the people around her. Yeah. Now, you don't have to read into it that way. The movie works perfectly as a ghost story. Yeah, as a literal series of events. Or, or an perfectly. evil fucking hand story. <laughs> I like that the movie works on both levels. You can have the straightforward horror movie, but you could also have the metaphor horror movie. Yeah. And the fact that it's released by A24 means I'm willing to lean a little bit more into that metaphor. Um, it's also probably one of the most intense horror movies I've seen this year, aside from maybe Unseen, which- Yeah, Unseen was pretty- was, That was, was pretty, pretty intense. intense. This does not have as yeah, much this humor. Is, it gets very little humor in you're, it. You're dealing with a bunch of trauma happening to kids, right? Like not, and I'm not talking about trauma as in like PTSD and stuff. I mean like blunt force force trauma but yeah, yeah. and like bodily mutilation. Yeah, it's a lot of mutilation. And on top of that, you're dealing with themes of like dead parents, even the body horror in the movie. It doesn't look like the exaggerated body horror that, you know, I love from like oh, 80s yeah, movies. Yeah. It looks like real fucking, like, like a real fucking victim you would find in a hospital. Yeah, yeah, they went to, they, they did, yeah, hey, makeup effects, you did a great job. They did, the makeup effects did a fucking great, especially on one character. Yeah. There is one Ooh. character in this movie that I realized really early on was essentially the little sister in Hereditary. Yes. And once I realized that's going to be their role in the story, it was just dread from then on out for me every time that character showed up, because I'm just I'm just waiting for the other shoe to drop. Yeah, and then it does. And then it does. And the um, effects on that character. God. God. Well done. That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's saving your best for where it counts. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think it has one of my favorite opening scenes of a horror movie this year. When the shit hits the fan in the opening scene, I was not expecting it to go where it did. No. No, because they, they, they did this thing that is, it's always super effective if you can pull it off. If you can't pull it off, it looks really stupid, mm -hmm. which is to do the opening switch up. Yeah. In the same shot. Yes. And they, that was impressive. And they do it masterfully. Yeah. It was really good because I'm like, oh God, what's, what's going to happen? Now? Wow. Oh, oh, oh shit. Okay. Uh, wasn't 
expecting that. I've already seen that this movie's doing really well in theaters right now, and it's going up against like some big movies. Like oh, we got yeah. we got the Barbenheimer thing going on. We got Mission Impossible, and we got bigger horror movies like Disney's Haunted Mansion out right now. But this little movie's the engine that could right now. You oh know? yeah, definitely. And what I really like about it is I can tell just from having seen it now that this is gonna be like an It Follows. It's oh, gonna be yeah. a sleeper hit that's gonna speak to the generation that it's about. Yeah. And it's probably gonna be a cult classic years from now. You know, to think that like It Follows is now what, eight years old? I know, I know. You know, so like the influence of It Follows in this movie is probably real. Oh yeah, it's all over this movie, yeah. even though this movie has a completely different story. Yeah. But it feels like a movie made by people who liked It Follows. Yeah, yeah, all it would really need is that like synthwave soundtrack. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it would mm -hmm. feel just like It Follows. What this movie has instead is it uses a lot of contemporary rap music. And it yes. actually works yeah, really well. Yeah, it works really well. Because it sets the tone for the movie and it sets the tone for these kids. So needless to say, I thought this was one of the best horror movies of the year. Just without question, like I immediately left the theater and I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna have to go adjust my top 10 list on Letterboxd. This movie's gonna go on yeah. there. Both on not just the horror list, but also the not horror list that has everything else. Yeah. <laughs> because it's just, it's so good. The acting's good, the writing's good, the tension's good, the effects are good, the gore is good, and so is just the spook factor. Yeah. The spooky ghost scenes, when those happen, they're pretty effective. It's super good. We should probably get on spoilers. I think we absolutely should get onto the spoilers. Talk to me is currently in theaters. If you want to go see it, go see it in theaters. I'm sure it'll hit streaming at some point, but I do not know when. But trust me, this movie is worth the theatrical experience. And with that said, my fellow Gorehounds, let us move on to the spoilers. <laughs> Oh my God, just that one scene where that character is constantly hitting his head against the tile. Oh God. Whoa, that is brutal. Oh, absolutely. So one of the core things that happens throughout this movie is, weirdly enough, you'd think that the going over the time at the beginning of the movie was gonna be the main catalyst for bad things going on. But the main bad thing that ends up happening is the main character, Mia, lets her best friend's little brother yeah. perform the seance despite no one wanting him to do it. And the ghost ends up basically taking over the kid. Yeah, and taking over the kid and... Mutilating him. Mutilating him. Yeah, like we're talking, there's a point where he's trying to pull his own eye out. Yeah. Ooh. And he's bashing his head against like furniture and shit. And then eventually later on in the movie against the tiles of the fucking hospital. Yeah. And like smashing the tiles in like that. There's no way he's not brain dead in the morning. Yeah, you no know? fucking Jesus Christ. Right. He's the character I met when I said, when I realized, oh shit, he's going to be the equivalent of the little sister in Hereditary. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And, and I was right. And due to the end, you're not, you're also not sure how much of that end is the real world. Mm -hmm. The ultimate culmination yeah. of this movie is the main character, Mia, by the end of the movie has either been possessed or has been severely lied to by the spirits in the hand. And they have convinced her that she needs to kill Riley, the little brother character. At the end of the movie, when it's the final finish line, when she's gonna push Riley into traffic, yeah, she ends up getting thrown into traffic instead. They don't show us whether it's because she threw herself into traffic or because her friend, who is the sister of the little brother character, whether she pushed her instead. Yeah. They don't show us because we see it through this weird, like, first person view of a car that hits her. But we do know either way, she ends up getting hit by the car instead. And then the movie shows her going through the hospital and no one being able to hear her and eventually ending up in this land of darkness where a candle is lit and a hand is presented to her and she touches the hand and then all all of a sudden, she's now the ghost on the other end of one of those seances. And there's a completely new group of people performing the seance. The idea being, she is now part of the spirits in the hand. Very dark ending. It's a very dark ending. It's it's super Tales from the Crypty too. Yeah, yeah. It actually actually reminded me, the, the thing that it reminded me of is the ending of a lot of late 90s, early 2000s Japanese horror stories. I would agree, yeah. You know, where you're just sort of like, oh, I don't know if they deserve this. That's not the point. What, you know, does like, Mia deserve it? I don't think so. No. That no. being said, if someone watches this movie and is really frustrated with decisions that Mia makes, I understand. Oh, yeah. Now, I understood yeah. why she was making all those decisions. Yes. Like, the story does a really good job of getting you to understand her point of view, even when she's doing something that's patently a stupid idea. Yeah, you know, like when I was a kid, I told myself a long time ago, <laughs> like if I ever saw a ghost and it told me to like 
do something bad, yeah. my response is going to be, no, no need knock, knock that shit off. <laughs> knock it off, ghost. Knock it off, ghost. Out of my house. I don't need this shit. <laughs> I live here now. Be gone, ghost. Yeah. Get the fuck out of my house. Maybe that's the Chinese in me. You it's, know? Well, you're right. You're definitely yeah. right. <laughs> the thing, though, is that the movie does a really good job of making you understand why she ends up doing this. Because first off, the ghosts are able to possess you. So like, Oh, they, yeah. Yeah, they take your shit over. There's literally a point in which she wakes up sucking on someone's toe because because a ghost took over her. Yeah. It's a really weird fucking scene, but it's a pretty creepy scene. Yeah. I feel like in some draft of the <laughs> script, it was straight up a blowjob. I wouldn't be surprised. You know? I wouldn't be surprised. You know, it'd be like... <laughs> in that fucking zombie ass makeup. Yes! Yes! That'd been amazing. <laughs> Part of why everything goes wrong is because she realizes that she can use the hand to communicate with her dead mother. Yeah. And there's a lot of things that was very shady about her mother's death that she kind of wanted answered. And she does get them answered to a certain extent, but then you're not sure if the hand is telling her the truth. And that's when you know, that's your hint that the hand, there may not actually be the ghosts. Yeah, the hand, something is lying to you. The hand is controlling shit. It is, it is, it is manipulating you. And so she is convinced by the hand that she needs to kill Riley because Riley is an eternal pain because the ghosts have him. And that if she doesn't kill him, he's gonna forever be stuck in this coma. And the ghost that's telling her this is one that presents itself as her dead mother. Yeah. And, and it's also showing her shit that's not real. Like yes. it makes her think her dad yes. is attacking her at one point, which leads to her accidentally stabbing her dad when he comes in to try to help her. Yeah. It's an evil fucking hand. Yeah. And it's tricking her. So, like, you understand why she's making these bad decisions, but they are bad decisions. But you can also take it as a metaphor for someone who just lost, like, their mom or something to an apparent suicide, is now dealing with depression themselves, and then throws themselves all in on, like, a drug that makes them feel happy. Maybe, like, a speed or a meth or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, that turns on them. And it starts off all good and happy when she's having the initial conversations with her mom. But then eventually, the ghost mom starts telling her to do terrible things, like hurt her friends and do all these things. Yep. Which, you know, someone who gets really addicted to drugs will reach that point in which they're now hurting the people around them so they can get their fix. Yeah, yeah. Because they're, they're now in that much pain due to what the drug does to your body. Absolutely. And so it kind of works as the, like both a metaphor for that, but also just as a straight up ghost story. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Or an evil fucking hand story. Well, yeah, because like, I'm like, okay, there's two levels to this thing. One, there are the yeah. spirits that are connected to the hand. But I'm like, no, that vision of her mom, that's the hand itself. Yeah. That's the hand itself. It's not actually her mom at any point. No. Some of these ghosts are probably real, and most of them are probably victims of the hand, if not all of them. Right. And we know this because she ends up being on the other end of one of those hands at some point. Yeah. And there is one point where one of the ghosts says, he's going to split you up. Yeah. Yeah. And you get the feeling that it's talking about the spirit of the hand. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, like it's going to do it. The foreshadowing in this movie is just really well done. In fact, part of what made me start thinking about like the drug metaphor is that scene really early on in the movie when the little brother and his friend are talking about that cigarette, where his friend's trying to basically peer pressure him into smoking the cigarette. Yeah. And then later on in the movie, when some characters don't want to perform the seance and the rest of the friends are like, do it, do, do it. it. It very much like plays into that metaphor to yeah. a certain extent. When you read it that way, it's almost a little like- It's a little heavy handed. It's a little heavy handed. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you did there. I see what you did there. I'm going to put that as the fucking tagline on this fucking review. Heavy-handed Heavy -handed. metaphor. <laughs> But yeah, if you take it that way, it's a little back to school specially, but it also makes me think of like, um, of It Follows, you know? Yes. Yeah, it's a really good movie. <laughs> really it's fucking good. really good. Any final thoughts? Oh man, no, go see it. Go see go it. Go see it. Good solid, good solid horror movie. Talk to me, like I said, one of the best horror movies of the year. One of the best movies of the year I've seen, period. I highly recommend you go check it out. Yeah, probably top five. Yeah. Definitely. It's fucking yeah. great. Where can they find you, Count Jackula? Oh, you can find me on Twitter at Counting Jack. You can find me on Instagram at Satanic Jackula. And you can find me on TikTok at Real Count Jackula. And I'd love to see you there. Also, I'm now on Blue Sky because we got to try everything. <laughs> and I'm Count Jackula on Blue Sky, and you're like, holy shit, found one where you got to keep your name. Yes, you're I did. actually Count Jackula. I'm on actually there. Count Jackula on the blue sky. With that said, what about you? Y'all know me. I'm the Horror Guru. You can find me at the Horror Guru on Twitter, on Twitch, on Instagram, and Facebook. Blue Sky, 
TikTok. Just look up The Horror Guru or Blood Splattered Cinema and I'll be there. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that notification bell so that you're notified of my videos immediately upon their upload. And if you'd like to help out either of us more directly, be sure to check out our Patreon pages. And remember, if you decide to go the Patreon route, even a dollar a month can go a long way, though we will be happy to take more. And with that said, my fellow Gorehounds, if you made it this far into the video, then I want you to comment below and be sure to comment below using the hashtag. Give us more on Patreon. Hashtag give us more on Patreon. Oh my God. We beg of you. That's not going to be the hashtag, but I like your enthusiasm. <laughs> hashtag talk to the hand. Use the hashtag. <laughs> Use the hashtag talk to the hand, work it into your comment however you please. That way I know. That way Jack knows. That way the whole world knows that you're gonna fuck over your friends by getting possessed by a demon or a monster or a ghost or whatever the fuck the evil hand is, and you're gonna try to kill them. Which is not good. For the record, that's not good. Don't do that. That's not good. Don't do that. I don't you care know. that your mom's dead. Don't do that. <laughs> It does not justify yeah, it. Doesn't justify it. It's a bad idea. Bad idea. Bad idea. You think anyone tried to jerk it with that hand? Peace out, everyone. <laughs>